Hi everyone! As promised in today's video, we are going to go more in-depth about partition priorities. This is a topic that seems not well understood, even by more experienced outfit modders, and there isn't much information out there on the subject. I'm not a total expert, being fairly new to understanding this myself, but I wanted to review what I've learned so that you can experiment with this in your own outfits. I'm going to cover the following points in this video. For a broad overview of partitions, please refer back to video number 13 in this series. There are also two great articles you can read, and I've included links to them in the description. One last thing before we jump in, this video is aimed at using partitions for Skyrim outfits. If you are making stuff for Fallout 4, I believe that splitting the mesh into different partition segments is important for in-game dismemberment to work properly. But I don't play or mod Fallout, and so I can't speak to the specifics on that. Recall from back in video number 15 that vertices are the dots that are used to make our mesh, edges are the lines that connect the vertices, and faces are the surfaces, like triangles, that they make. A polygon is the entire shape, and you will hear this term applied to outfit meshes. There is a great article from Third Space Learning that I've linked in the description, so have a look at that if you're still feeling a bit confused. The reason this is important to understand it is because it is technically the faces that have to be assigned to a partition in your mesh. Each triangle face can only be assigned to one partition. But since the faces share vertices along their edges, it can appear as if vertices on partition borders are being assigned to two partitions at the same time. Don't let that confuse you. It is actually the face, not the vertex, that is getting the partition. The faces that make up your mesh can all be assigned to the same partition, as shown here, or they can be split across different partitions, like you can see here for the CBBE body. When you are deciding how to split your mesh into different partitions, there is no hard and fast rule about where to draw the lines. You can assign whichever faces to whichever partitions you want, but you need to understand how this works so you don't accidentally make weirdness happen with your outfits or accessories. Use partitions because they are very helpful, but always be thoughtful about how you do it. There are some rules that can help, and we'll cover that in a bit. It's very easy in Outfit Studio to add partitions to a mesh, delete partitions, or change partitions, and it's easy to reassign faces to different partitions. You do that here in the Partitions tab, and we worked on an example together in the last video. Remember that partitions are one of the unbreakable rules when it comes to Skyrim NIFs. They must be identical between the size 0 and size 1 files, meaning the same faces must be assigned to exactly the same partitions or it will break weight sliding. This is yet another reason why you might get exploding meshes in your game. We've covered this several times already, so hopefully you remember that there are two places in the plugin where we have to include partition information. In the armor record, we indicate the equip slot for the item. This is exclusive and no two items can be worn in the same slot at the same time. You should indicate at least one partition here that matches at least one of the partitions used in your NIF. Note that you can list more than one, even if the others are not in your NIF, but this will block other items from being worn in that slot, as we've seen for circlets and helmets, for example. In the armor add-on record, we list the partitions that we want to be considered for partition priorities. At a minimum, you must list all the partitions used within your NIF here. If you don't, then the parts of your mesh that you forgot about will be invisible in the game. You can also list other partitions here, beyond those that are used in your NIF. The effect that this has is somewhat complicated, 
And we'll get to that in a bit when we talk about the partition priority rules. The armor add-on record is also where we provide the partition priority value. And please note, you can only list one priority value to an item. So every partition in your mesh will use the value listed here. And that means that you can't make one mesh in the NIF behave with one priority value and a different mesh in the same NIF behave as a different priority. You are stuck with one priority value that needs to work for the entire NIF. So we've covered how partitions are set up in the mesh and how they are set up in the plugin for establishing partition priorities. But how do you know what priority value to give a particular item? Conceptually, this is easy to understand. The higher the priority value, the more priority something has. So 5 will win out over 0, 10 wins out over 5, 15 wins out over 10, and so on. Generally, it seems to work best if you use increments of 5 when setting priority values. However, you will see that Skyrim items don't always fit that recommendation. The maximum priority value used for Skyrim items appears to be 15, although you can go higher. I don't know how high you can go, and I've seen things up to 25 in mods, but you probably won't ever need to go that high anyway. Base game outfits and accessories in Skyrim tend to use the following priority values. Some outfit pieces are set up a little differently, but these values are the most common. If you are making one of these types of items, I suggest using the Skyrim value listed here unless you actually need a different value for your item to work as you want. Just remember that if you do anything outside the norm, your new item may not work well with existing items. Smart use of partitions and partition priorities in the NIFs and armor add-on records can improve how items look when they are worn together, especially if they are part of a matching set. To help you understand the concept and the possibilities, let's look at some examples. Vanilla Skyrim makes pretty good use of two approaches in particular, setting partition priorities on forearms so that gauntlets will cover long-sleeved outfits, and setting them on calves so that boots will cover long pants. Here you can see this is well done for the Imperial Armor, where the calves partition on the boots hides the same partition on the naked legs. And for the mage robes and boots, where the calves partition on the pants and the boots fixes the problem that you can see on the left with the meshes themselves. And also in the merchant outfit, where the calves partition on the naked body, on the bottom of the pants, and on the boots all work nicely together to get rid of the clipping of the meshes that's shown on the left. But this is not done consistently for all outfits in the base game, and there are definitely some that can be improved. Like in the Thalmor robes, where we can see that the forearms partition was not set high enough, and so part of the sleeve actually sticks out of the gauntlets, both outside the game on the left and in Skyrim as shown on the right. And also this farmer outfit, where the calves partition was not set high enough, and so we can see the pants clipping through the top of the boots. Lastly, if you look at the nightingale armor, no calves partition was used in the boots at all. And so in this case, you can see the clipping, and it's actually worse in the game than it is outside the game, probably because of how the lower leg is weight painted in the armor versus the boots. We can also see how our demo jeans work well with the hide boots because we have the calves partition shown in green here in both of the meshes and the jeans have priority. But the wench boots, which are all just one partition, the feet as shown in red, do not work well with our jeans. Bethesda mostly used the calves and forearms partitions in the base game outfits that you can set up a more complex system of priorities involving most of the other outfit partitions. 
For example, here is a test case that I put together from our demo mod. I used the same partition, colored in purple, to give the belt priority over the shirt. And another partition, colored this brownish shade, to give the pants priority over the panties. And the red is for the calves partition, which is what we use in both the jeans and the boots in our last video. On the right, you can see exactly the same meshes worn in the game, and the clipping is completely gone thanks to the partition priority system. There are some rules, caveats, and imperfections in this system, but it's definitely worth learning. At the very least, I encourage you to make smart use of the 38 calves and 34 forearms partitions so that your boots and gloves will work nicely with the arms and legs on your main outfit. Hopefully, seeing the examples I've shown here for both the good and the bad gives you a better idea of how to do this correctly to minimize clipping. Most, but not all, partitions work similarly. So let's talk about some of the nuances, starting with the naked body. Your character's birthday suit uses partition 32 for the main body, 33 for the hands, and 37 for the feet. And all of these have priority values of zero in the armor add-on. When you wear anything that uses 32, 33, or 37 as an equip slot, it replaces the naked part. This is normal and good, and it's the way Skyrim outfits work. But if your item includes 32, 33, or 37 as a partition priority slot, it will also replace the naked part, even if it does not use that partition as the equip slot. This is a problem, because you'll end up with that body part becoming invisible in the game. So basically, that means you should not use slot 32 body, 33 hands, or 37 feet in either the armor record or the armor add-on record, unless your item is actually meant to replace the naked body, the naked hands, or the naked feet. There are other partitions with interesting behavior like hair, long hair, and ears, and I won't pretend to understand them all. But the typical outfit partitions that you'll be using, aside from 32, 33, and 37, all follow the same rules, which we will discuss next. If in doubt about how to set up your new item, I suggest finding an existing item that behaves the way you want and then set yours up the same way. As a general rule of thumb, an item will be overridden by another item that has the same partition in the armor add-on record with a higher priority value. But this gets a bit complicated depending on the circumstances for the two items in question. There are, to start off with, two overarching truths. First, you should avoid using 32 body, 33 hands, and 37 feet in the armor add-on record, unless that is also the item's equip slot. Otherwise, it tends to make these body parts disappear, and the priority values give inconsistent outcomes. All other partition slots, except for maybe hair and ears, behave similarly to each other and seem to follow a set of priority rules that depend upon the specific setup of the items being worn together. As best I can tell, for all partitions other than 32, 33, and 37, and possibly hair and ears, the priority rules are as follows. I'm not going to read through these, so I suggest you grab a screenshot if you'd like to have this for reference. I know this sounds a bit complicated, and most of these combinations that I tried gave very consistent results, but a few of them did behave a little strangely at times. So while I'm fairly confident in these rules, it's possible that you may see some different behaviors. As an example, here are some screenshots of my testing with the 35 amulet partition. When my new item does not have any faces set to 35 in the NIF, 
but I include 35 in the armor add-on record, it will override the vanilla amulet when my priority value is equal to or higher than it. But if my new item has a lower priority compared with the amulet, then both items will show. If I then add partition 35 to my NIF by assigning it to some of the faces in the mesh, then the outcomes are the same, except that my full mesh will not show when my item has lower priority. Instead, the parts of the mesh that I assigned to 35 amulet become invisible. You'll notice that the rules are almost, but not quite, identical, whether the partition is also used as an equip slot or not. So there are several things to take into consideration when you are trying to figure out how to set up your partition priorities. The best approach is to probably just get in there and play around with it until you find what works. Before we wrap up, I just want to make you aware that partition priorities yes. can be a little buggy. In particular, they can break in a seemingly random fashion when you load up a game. And what looked fine when you logged out is no longer looking so fine. The fix for this is easy. Just save again and then load up your new save. Quick save seems more prone to causing this bug. So generally, I advise that you avoid quick saving and quick loading as much as you can. Using partition priorities effectively is a good way to make your outfit items work well together. So feel free to experiment with this. But please do remember that it isn't necessarily a universal fix because it might not work well for items that are not part of a matching set. And always refer back to the partition priority rules so that you know what priority values to give your items in order to get the behavior that you want. Thanks for watching and learning more about partition priorities with me. Next time, we're going to apply many of the things that we've learned so far to create a new variant of the vanilla dragon scale armor. And after that, we're finally going to get to weight painting. Oh joy. Until then, keep experimenting and having fun with your outfit work. Bye.